The Cascade Mountains of Western Oregon are thick with tall timber, growing along rugged slopes broken by waterfalls and streams. Through this spectacular setting, trains battle a heavy grade which takes them from deep within the Willamette Valley to nearly 5,000 feet above sea level. This is the legendary Cascade Line. Part one of this two-part series covers Union Pacific's Brooklyn and Cascade subdivisions between Eugene and the summit, just south of Tunnel 3. A 40-mile 1.8% grade between Oak Ridge and the top of the pass puts UP's newest locomotives to the test and keeps train crews on their toes. Trains pass through numerous tunnels and rock sheds that burrow deep within the mountains. In this highly anticipated follow-up to our first show, Union Pacific's Cascade Sub, we hike deeper into the most remote parts of the line, where the track clings to a narrow shelf high above the valley floor. We'll also visit ground zero of the infamous Fraser Slide, which closed the railroad for three months in 2008. A great mix of trains can be found on the hill, including manifests, double stacks, 14,000 ton oil trains, and Amtrak's premier passenger train, the Coast Starlight. Shot in all four seasons in a seven-year period between 2008 and 2015, this is the ultimate journey through the Oregon Cascades. The Cascade Line was completed in 1926 by the Southern Pacific as an alternate route to the Siskiyou Line between Eugene and Black Butte, California. Referred to as the Natron Cutoff, the new line headed east through the Cascade Mountains via Klamath Falls and trimmed over 20 miles off the route to Northern California. As we tour the line today, we will be working north to south beginning at Eugene Yard. The first 46 miles to Oak Ridge are part of Union Pacific's Brooklyn subdivision, and we will visit Springfield Junction, Springfield, Natron, and Dugran. The main line follows the south shore of Lookout Point Reservoir through Minnow, Crail, and Hampton, then continues up the middle fork of the Willamette River through Lookout and Oak Ridge, which is the bottom of the heavy grade to Summit. Oak Ridge is the division point, and southbound trains enter the Cascade subdivision here. Fast running through mostly level track is over, as locomotives dig in for the 40-mile continuous grade of up to 1.87%. The track speed from here on will average between 25 and 35 miles per hour, although heavy trains will do much less than that. The rails climb the north slope of Salt Creek Canyon and head in a southeasterly direction through Pryor, McCready Springs, and Heather. The grade then curves in a horseshoe over Salt Creek Trestle, taking a northwest heading as it climbs through Wicopee on the middle level of the Cascade Loops. The line then makes another horseshoe inside of Tunnel 16, putting it again in a southeast heading as it approaches fields. Fraser is a location of the 2008 slide where millions of tons of mud and debris wiped out the main line as well as a small section of track just north of Wicopee. Continuing railroads south, we head through some of the most remote trackage on the hill where various tunnels and rock sheds exist, passing the sightings of Cruzette 
and Abernathy before reaching the top of the grade at Cascade Summit. A patched Southern Pacific GP60, still wearing scarlet and gray colors, rests from its duties at Eugene Yard. Once a busy classification yard on the Southern Pacific, Eugene is primarily a crew change point between Portland and Klamath Falls. A handful of regional railroads interchange with the UP here. They include corp trains using the newly reopened Siskiyou Line to the south, Portland and Western to the north, and the Coos Bay Rail Link to the west. Local jobs also service industry in the southern Willamette Valley, and it is not unusual to see switching activities going on here. As the SP faded into the UP in the late 1990s, classification operations were moved to Roseville, California. Today, most manifest trains on this line either originate or terminate in Roseville. A perfect example is the approaching UP 7490 North. The train's symbol is the MRVEU. The M stands for manifest, RV means the train originated in Roseville, and EU stands for its destination here in Eugene. This 85 car train consists of 34 loads and 51 empties, and the crew is just completing their 200 mile run over the Cascades from Klamath Falls, Oregon, near the California border. We watch as the train enters the yard near milepost 649 on the Brooklyn subdivision. The train slowly passes by, casting long shadows in the late afternoon sun. As it enters the yard, it meets UP 7345 South. This is train QPWRV. The Q means it's a high priority manifest, and PW tells us it was brought to Eugene by the Portland and Western Railroad and is bound for Roseville. The train picks up speed as it exits the yard. As you can see, lumber loads make up the majority of this 10,000-ton train. Forest products from mills around the Pacific Northwest are a major commodity on the Cascade Line. Trains usually head south loaded and return north with empties. The prevailing 1.8% grade up to Cascade Summit means additional locomotives are needed on southbounds. This train is no exception, as two big diesels have been added to the rear. As the MRVEU continues into the yard, let's turn south. Although we are only four miles from the yard, Springfield Junction is milepost 621.9 on the timetable, which is a difference of 27 miles. This discrepancy is because the newer and shorter Cascade line splits off to the left toward Oak Ridge, while the original Siskiyou line continues south toward Roseburg. The two lines come back together again at Black Butte, California, nearly 300 miles to the south. Completed in 1926 by the Southern Pacific, the Cascade Line became the primary route into California due to its easier grades and gentler curves, and the Siskiyou Line was downgraded to a secondary route. 
UP 7408 North rolls through Springfield Junction on its way to Eugene. Moving to the other side of the trestle, Amtrak 11, the southbound Coast Starlight heads through Springfield Junction at sunset. The sky is pitch black as an early November storm dumps rain on the Cascade Mountains. The starlight crosses a through truss bridge as it enters a town of Springfield. It will make tonight's journey through the distant mountains under the cloak of darkness. The bridge crosses over the Willamette River near downtown Springfield. From a local park near the water's edge, we catch a northbound manifest as it crosses the river. AKCS SD70ACE adds a splash of color to the consist. A classic Southern Pacific Depot stands in downtown Springfield after being donated by the SP in 1988. Built in the 1890s, it was moved from its original location and restored. Today it houses the local Chamber of Commerce. A vintage RPO car is also on display behind the depot just a couple of blocks off the main line. Springfield's roots are deep in the timber industry with Weyerhaeuser and Roseboro operating lumber mills that date back to the early 1900s. UP's Weyerhaeuser Local comes off the Mohawk branch after switching the Weyerhaeuser mill located at the northeast end of town. As the train enters the Springfield yard, it passes the Roseboro mill, which is situated just off the main line. Completed in 1940, it was considered the Northwest's most modern timber manufacturing plant and today continues to serve customers all over the nation. Be sure to look for the Roseboro logo on loaded center beam cars like these as we catch heavy trains heading over the Cascades today. Speaking of trains, UP 8082 North blows for a nearby crossing and passes the plant.
As the train departs, it passes a small yard at Springfield. Natron is milepost 615.8 on the Brooklyn sub. At Amtrak 14, the northbound coast starlight approaches our location on a cloudy fall day. Light traffic passes by on Jasper Road, which parallels the track for a few miles out of Springfield. The train rolls through a high wide detector at milepost 616 and we hear the report over the road channel after the train passes. UP detector milepost 616.0. No defects. Total axle 52. Train speed 50 MPH. Temperature 50 degrees. Detector out. Eyeball 14 and the 10 MPH coming up. Hi, young. Stand up. No flag. Come it up, though. In 1952, 25 miles of the Cascade Line were relocated to make room for the Lookout Point Reservoir. Dugran, near milepost 610, is the first sighting on the newer alignment. UP 7514 South leads a 91 car QPW RV past our location. At Dexter Park, we get our first glimpse of the Lookout Point Reservoir. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers built two dams along the middle fork of the Willamette River to control flooding and generate electricity. The Lowell Covered Bridge stretches 165 feet across the reservoir below the Lookout Point Dam. Although it is no longer used, it remains as an attraction and has been on the National Register of Historic Places since 1979. Above the bridge, the Lookout Point Dam stands 276 feet high and was completed in 1955. The water swallowed up several miles of the old railroad grade and several station names like Pingra, Lowell, Carter, Burgess, and others faded into history. The second of the new sightings on the relocation is Minnow. A northbound intermodal train races by.
The railroad follows the south bank of the Lookout Point Reservoir. For the past few years, a drought has left the water quite low in the upper end. Stumps are visible from trees that once stood here prior to the building of the dam. The rails glisten again and we get a surprise. BNSF 6684 South races toward Hampton with a manifest. This is a BNSF reroute heading to Barstow, California. It's something that doesn't happen very often on the Cascade Line, and we find the BNSF train a real treat. Dusk settles in along the reservoir between Minnow and Crail. The rails glisten as UP 5430 South races past in the gathering darkness. Notice UP 1988, the Katy Heritage Unit tucked into the consist. From the other side of the reservoir, we can see the effects of the drought as we look across land that is not normally visible. This gives us the opportunity to see the old railroad grade completed by the Oregon Eastern Railway Company in 1912. Several cement culverts are still visible, again handling the small creeks they were originally built for. Looking upstream, Amtrak 14 glides along the rails between Hampton and Crail on its northbound run. Highway 58 traffic can be seen behind the train. Hampton marks the south end of the reservoir. The ground we are standing on is normally underwater, but now is covered in a blanket of green grass. A northbound manifest is silhouetted as it crosses the three-span through truss bridge. Springtime in the foothills of the Oregon Cascades is lush with vegetation and wildflowers. By midsummer, they take on a different hue from warm temperatures and the lack of rain. Another northbound crosses the bridge with nine engines on the point.
The extra locomotives are being returned to either Eugene or Portland to assist heavy southbounds over the Cascade Mountains. The ruling grade for northbounds is 2.2% above Dunsmere, California, where the southbound ruling grade is 1.8% above Oak Ridge. As we have mentioned before, southbound trains are heavier and therefore need more power. A set of double stacks has been tacked onto the rear of this train as it heads toward Eugene. The Hampton Bridge spans the river near milepost 590 and is located at the south end of the 1953 line relocation. We are standing where the original grade and the new line came back together on the south side of the bridge. UP 5308 South leads a 99 car manifest bound for Roseville. Here, trains begin to feel the first hint of a grade at around 0.85% as they enter the foothills of the Cascades. The railroad continues to follow the middle fork of the Willamette River on its way to Oak Ridge. The first of 21 remaining tunnels between Eugene and Cascade Summit is found at milepost 587.2. Tunnel 24 cuts 394 feet through solid granite and frames UP 7941 north as it rolls downgrade between the sidings of Lookout and Hampton. On a sunny day in early spring, we catch Amtrak 14 gliding down through the woods just above the tunnel. Three private cars bring up the rear of the train today. A northbound empty oil train rolls through Lookout behind three Canadian Pacific units and one UP.
Lookout is a 5,758-foot sighting and is located just over three miles from Oak Ridge. The afternoon sun filters through the fresh green maple leaves as we move to the south end of the siding. Amtrak 11 is heard approaching on the 50 mile per hour track. The days are getting longer and today's passengers will be treated to a daylight run over the Cascades. Something not to be missed. The next tunnel we encounter is Tunnel 23, which was abandoned by the Southern Pacific in 1988 after it was found to be caving in. Fortunately, there was enough room to reroute the railroad around the south side. The tunnel is off limits to curious folks, and the old bore has been fenced off. In our June visit to the Cascade Sub, yellow scotch broom blossoms decorate the right of way as UP 5468 North races by the old tunnel. We are near the community of West Fur. Just off the main line, a couple of old buildings stand empty in a small clearing in the woods. They were built by the U.S. Forest Service and once housed crews working in the area. West Fur was once a booming lumber town and the site of the Western Lumber Company sawmill. A mural on a building in nearby Oak Ridge gives us a picture of what the mill looked like in its heyday. It was destroyed by fire in 1984, and the site was abandoned. The only remaining structure is the office-covered bridge, which crosses the Willamette River. At 180 feet, it is Oregon's longest covered bridge. It was built in 1945 by the Westfer Lumber Company and is the only covered bridge west of the Mississippi with a separate pedestrian walkway. From inside the bridge, one can look upstream and see where the railroad crosses the Willamette. UP 8073 South approaches Oak Ridge in the shadow of the mountains. Here is the same scene in the winter as a northbound crosses the river.
After crossing the Willamette River one last time, southbound trains plunge into Tunnel 22. The 2,200-foot bore penetrates the mountain that separates Oak Ridge from West Fur. On a frosty November day, the northbound Amtrak 14 exits the tunnel. The south bore of the tunnel opens at the edge of Oak Ridge Yard. A train order office existed here called Tunnel, which handled increased traffic brought on by World War II. By 1949, Tunnel was closed and today is no more. A southbound oil train rolls past the old tunnel site and into Oak Ridge on a cold rainy day. Oak Ridge marks the start of the heavy grade into the Cascade Mountains. As the remote-controlled swing helpers come into view, we can hear that they are already beginning to dig in for the climb as they pass by. A Canadian Pacific C44-9AC with the famous Beaver logo and a UP C45AC CTE shove on the rear of the heavy 99 car train. Located at the bottom of the heavy grade, Oak Ridge played a key role on the Cascade line during the days of steam. Today it is a maintenance of way base housing a Jordan spreader, flanger, and other snow removal equipment for service during the winter months. A Y track for turning steam locomotives still sees occasional use, and a few SP buildings continue to stand on the property. During our filming between 2008 and 2015, the Cascade Line saw some major changes. Besides longer and heavier trains, the federal requirement of positive train control meant an extensive signal upgrade. The classic SP searchlights that had operated since the 1950s were replaced with newer digital LED signals. For the SP fans, we made it a point to document many of the classic signals, which were largely gone by 2014. During the upgrade, Oak Ridge became a staging area for new signal masts, boxes, 
and fiber optic cable which would be installed on the hill. On a warm summer evening in 2012, Amtrak 11 races through Oak Ridge between stops in Eugene and Chamalt. Three years later, smoky skies filter the evening sunlight as the grade crossing gates at the south end of the yard are activated. A heavy lumber train prepares for the mountain grade ahead as it leaves the Brooklyn sub behind and enters the Cascade subdivision. It's 10 minutes to 7 in the morning, and we are set up at another grade crossing railroad south of the yard. An unusual train is creeping through the pre-dawn dark. This is Harsco Rail Grinder number RS6. This train will be working on the hill today between Heather and Wicopee, and we will catch up with him later on and show the grinder in operation. Around 30 minutes later, a warm headlight appears on this chilly January morning. UP 7712 South leads a UP Officer Special, symboled the SUOA 28.
After departing Oak Ridge, the track makes a horseshoe curve over Salmon Creek, which empties into the Middle Fork of the Willamette River. During the winter and spring, the icy water cascades over a concrete spillway beneath Bridge 578D, known as the Salmon Creek Bridge. The loud chorus of the churning water makes it difficult to hear approaching trains. However, we are persistent, and eventually, a southbound crosses the 282-foot structure. Here is what Salmon Creek looks like in the late summer. The past few years have been dry, and water level is low even for this season. We venture out among the river rocks that were submerged in the last scene and enjoy what is probably the coolest place to be during the dog days of summer. Amtrak 11 makes a quick appearance through the trees over the bridge. After crossing Salmon Creek, the railroad makes another horseshoe curve and enters Salt Creek Canyon. The next siding is named Pryor and is 6,757 feet in length. UP 7987 North leads a double stack train down the 1.5% descending grade. CSX 937, a GE ES44AH brings up the rear of the locomotive consist. The H designation refers to heavy. These units weigh 432,000 pounds, 16,000 pounds heavier than a standard evolution series. They also use special software to aid in producing higher tractive effort, which is the whole idea behind the heavy locomotives. UP also employs the new heavies on the line, and the extra tractive effort is said to make a difference on the wet, slippery rails that wind through these mountains. We continue climbing the north flank of Salt Creek Canyon at milepost 570.9. The officer special is again seen as it passes the advance signals to North McCready Springs in January of 2009.
CPVP570 marks the north switch of McCready Springs, an 8,520-foot siding. New LED signals guard the north switch, and a red over yellow means a southbound is going in the hole. The southbound in question is the BNSF 6684, leading the rerouted Barstow-bound manifest. All but one of the diesels on the point are ES44 C4s, which use four traction motors instead of six. So far, these units can only be found on two railroads, BNSF and Florida East Coast. Although they have the same horsepower rating as a standard six-axle unit, the C4 does not perform as well on mountain grades with heavy tonnage. For this reason, the crew has permission to have all five locomotives on the point online. A leased City Rail ES45 AC number 1207 and a UP Pool Power AC4400 number 6617 shoved the rear of the train into the siding. With the BNSF in the hole, the UP dispatcher in Omaha lines the switch for the main. About 20 minutes later, the southbound coast star line appears around the curve. A little-used grade crossing exists near the south end of McCready Springs, and from our vantage point, we can make out the SP Cantilever Signal Bridge guarding control point CPVP568. A clear shows for the main as UP7527 South climbs through a reverse S-curve on a rainy afternoon.
Continuing up the north slope of Salt Creek Canyon, a reconditioned SD9043AC number 3748 leads a 14,000 ton oil train up the hill. This train assembled the OACCA. It originated in Alberta, Canada on the Canadian Pacific and was handed over to the UP at Eastport, Idaho. It is bound for a new unloading facility near Bakersfield, California. These trains started running in late 2014 and are somewhat sporadic. Since this is a hazmat train, buffer cars are placed between the tank cars and locomotives. As we draw higher into the Cascades, the rain and fog settle in on the Willamette National Forest. We are at Heather, the last siding on the lower level of the Cascade Loops. UP 5365 North heads down grade after making a big horseshoe over Salt Creek Trestle, hidden in the trees to the right.
This scene was captured in the summer of 2012. A red board shows from the SP-style cantilever signal bridge, and we know it won't be long before these searchlights go dark for the last time. Just around the curve near milepost 563, the Salt Creek Trestle makes a 515-foot curve over Salt Creek and Highway 58. On a different day, CP 8749 leads a northbound empty oil train over the trestle. These trains are normally around 6,000 feet in length. Transitioning to winter, UP 5433 South leads a heavy QHKRV over Salt Creek. The Hinkle to Roseville Manifest crosses the trestle in a horseshoe, which takes it from a southeast heading to northwest, geographically back toward Oak Ridge. Only now, it is on the south side of Salt Creek Canyon and still climbing. The grade over Salt Creek Trestle is 1.7%. Work is about to commence on the curve over Salt Creek. Earlier, we saw this Harsco rail grinder departing Oak Ridge in the night. It is preparing to do some work between here and Wicopee, and the train slowly rolls out over the trestle.
The rail grinder is a menacing looking machine. Its peculiar black cars look like something out of a sci-fi movie. The crews that operate these trains live a nomadic life, for their task is to grind every mile of mainline track in the US and Canada. In the last seven years, Harsco grinders have covered over 192,000 miles of track. The rail grinder is used to restore the profile of the rail, which over time is worn down by heavy trains. This creates the optimal wheel contact with the rail and prolongs the life of the track. A laser profile measurement system looks at the condition of the track and shows how each section needs to be ground. Curves on mountain grades like this receive a lot of wear each year, and it is decided that the grinder will need to make three passes to restore the profile of the rail. Here's the first pass. The grinder makes a reverse move for the second pass. And finally, the third pass. An Oregon State Police officer has someone pulled over just below the grinder. We cannot help but wonder if he felt any metal shavings raining down from above. An SP Daylight Herald is still proudly displayed as a southbound crosses Salt Creek Trestle. A couple of old crows have a great vantage point here from which to catch the action. And who's to say they don't enjoy watching trains flying over the highway?
Just north of Wicopee, trains pass through the 436-foot bore of Tunnel 20. A northbound exits the tunnel at milepost 560.9. You have been watching an excerpt from Through the Oregon Cascades Part 1, available on DVD, HD Blu-ray, and digital download with Vimeo On Demand. Visit 7ideaproductions.com to order. If you like this program, be sure to like and subscribe to watch more content like this added weekly. From all of us at 7idea Productions, thanks for watching.